Hey y'all, and welcome back to Coding with Minmer. On today's agenda, we're going to tackle Leco Problem 125, Valid Palindrome. After that, we'll go over an actual variant of the original question that Meta asks. You'll see that they changed the problem statement considerably. But don't worry, after this video, we won't be caught off guard. Okay, let's get started. We're given a string s, like so, and we need to determine if it is a palindrome. If it is, we return true, otherwise we return false. There is more text up here, don't worry, we'll get to it. But the first question is, what is a palindrome? It's a string that's identical when read left to right and right to left. If we read this string forwards, we would get, well, just this string. But if we read it backwards and start from the N, we get the A first, and then the B, C, D, C, the B, and then finally the A. Cool, the two strings are the same. This must be a palindrome we return true. Now, if we wanted to go through each character in both directions and work our way inwards, doesn't this scream the two-pointer approach? We're going to have two pointers, L for left and R for right. As to where these pointers would start, we could have the left pointer at the zeroth index at the first character and work our way to the right the same time that we have a right pointer at the last index where we work our way backwards. We can enter a while loop and check the characters at the two pointers. If they are the same, which in this case they are, A equals A, then we increment the left pointer by one and decrement the right pointer by one. And now we'll just check the remaining substring. The two Bs match, we will increment and modify both pointers. We'll obviously keep going until the two either meet at the same index, in which case we've exhausted and looked at every character, we must have a palindrome. Or in the case of an even palindrome, then the two pointers would actually cross one another. As we see here, L is in front of R. They both crossed. In either case, we'll break out of our loop. And just so you know, we can be given numbers as well. This would also be a palindrome. Okay, this much is obvious, but the problem statement, remember, gives us two additional rules that complicate our two-pointer approach. That if we ever encounter an uppercase letter, we must convert it into a lowercase letter. What the problem's trying to say is that our palindrome is now case-sensitive. I suppose they could be going off each character's underlying numeric ASCII value in which a lowercase w has a decimal value of 119, and an uppercase w has a decimal value of 87, which the two are not the same. But the problem instructs us to normalize any uppercase letters we see into a lowercase character. So when we start our two-pointer approach, looking at the left pointer, we have to convert this uppercase w into a lowercase w, which makes these two characters the same. Fantastic, it passes our check. We increment the left pointer, decrement the right pointer. Here, we do the same thing. We found an uppercase O, let's turn it into a lowercase O. The two are now the same. Let's modify our two pointers, like so. Well, you look at that, they cross. That means we should return true, we have a palindrome. And after the two modifications, we have a string of this. Okay, so fantastic. This means with rule number one, our two pointer approach still works. So far, so good. Let's look at rule number two. Rule number two says we ignore anything that's non-alphanumeric. Or in other words, anything that isn't a number or a letter, lowercase a to z and uppercase a to z. But another way, we'll ignore anything that's not this, so like special characters. Let's take a look at this string and see if our two-pointer approach can handle this case. On the first iteration, our left pointer is at a character that isn't a letter or a number. Therefore, let's just skip this index and move it to index one. Interesting, we're at another at symbol. Let's move it again. Okay, now there's an underscore, which is obviously neither a letter or number. We'll skip it once more. Finally, that leads us to a valid character to consider in our palindrome checking. More formally, to do this in code, we'll have a nested while loop to increment our left pointer, so long as we have to ignore these characters. As you may guess, we'll do a similar thing with the right pointer. 
We'll enter another while loop to say that, hey, this exclamation point is not any of these characters. Let's decrement our right pointer to index 11. Okay, this two is obviously included in the zero to nine character. Let's continue on with our usual check. Are these two characters the same? Yes, they are. We'll modify both pointers like so. On the next iteration, do we have an alphanumeric character? Yes, we do. So we don't enter our nested while loop. Same thing with the right pointer. Now, before we compare these two characters, recall rule number one. Any uppercase character must be converted into its lowercase form. We do that and then do the comparison. They match. Great, let's adjust our two pointers. On the next iteration, we have yet another special character, an underscore. Let's follow our logic from before in loop L until we have a letter or number. There's nothing at index eight. We keep going and we're at index nine. This is where things get interesting. We're clearly still on a special character. Should we keep incrementing L? In short, no, because remember when the two pointers have met, then we should break out of our loop and return true. We've exhausted every single character. And indeed, ignoring all the characters we had to, we checked these characters, two, R, R, two. This is a palindrome. But let's play devil's advocate. What if we kept going? We'll increment L then to arrive at an alphanumeric character that's contained in our valid set. Okay, after that, we'll decrement R as long as we have non-alphanumeric characters. That'll land us eventually at index four. We compare the two we did before, but I guess we're doing it again. That's fine, that's valid. And we move on to the next iteration. The left pointer gets increment to 11 where we find the two again, and same thing with the R pointer. We checked them before, but the two are still the same. What did you expect? We will increment L and decrement R. But here lies the problem. We're going to increment L because again, the exclamation point is not included in our valid set of characters. So if one of our pointers is out of bounds, accessing anything in a vector that is out of bounds will blow up our code. The same thing will happen to the right pointer if you keep decrementing it all the way to negative one. Okay, fair enough. This just means we'll stop our nested loop when the two pointers either meet at the same index or have crossed. But with that said, despite these two rules imposed, we established that the two pointer approach still works. And that's what we'll go with. The time complexity is big O N, where N is the number of characters. The space complexity is big O one because we didn't have to store anything. Sounds good to me. Let's write up the code now. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is initialize our two pointers. The right pointer will be at our last index. Then we'll enter our while loop as long as the left pointer is lower than our right pointer. In each iteration, we'll have a nested while loop first for our left pointer. That if the character there is not alphanumeric, then we'll just keep skipping over it. We'll do the same thing for the right pointer afterwards. We just gotta change the pointer name to right. And we'll instead be decrementing that pointer. After that, our two pointers have landed on either a letter or number. Let's make sure we normalize both in case we encounter any uppercase letters. And don't worry, if you call this function on a number, nothing happens. It gets returned as is. But if the two aren't equal, then obviously we don't have a palindrome return false. If we made it past this check, the two characters must have been the same. Let's increment the left pointer and decrement the right pointer and move on to the next iteration. Remember, we'll keep incrementing our left pointer until we encounter a letter or number or if the two pointers have actually met. Otherwise, we'll have an out of bounds. Let's duplicate that check here as well. And if we made it out of this while loop, it can only mean one thing. We have a palindrome return true. Okay, that is the code. Let's get into the variant. All right, so the variant doesn't have the two rules we established in the original leak code problem. We can erase those from our minds. Instead, they give us one single new rule. We have to exclude any characters outside of a given vector of characters. In other words, we can only consider the characters as part of our palindromic checking if it's inside this limited set of characters. Let's look at a familiar example from before. Okay, let's reuse our two pointer approach and see if it's resilient to this new requirement. We'll see that the logic on each iteration changes ever so slightly. Now, instead of checking if a character is alphanumeric, remember the zero to nine, A to Z, capital A to Z, we'll check if it's in our vector of characters called include. So our bank of limited characters, in this case, contains a character two, 
lowercase r, a dash, and an uppercase r. Entering our while loop at the left pointer, we have an at symbol. That's not in our vector. So like before, we'll enter a nested loop to keep skipping characters. Same thing at index one, same thing at index two. An underscore is not in our vector of characters. This may look like it, but it's a dash. We increment L to index three. And finally, we have a two, which is in our vector. But how do we make this check in code? Do we really scan through each character in the entire vector? No, we don't, that's very inefficient. We could be given millions of characters. The time complexity for that would be n times m, where m is the number of characters in our includes vector. To improve this, why not pre-compute this given vector into a set? That way, on any given iteration, we can make a big O1 check whether the given character is in the set or not. Great, that's much more efficient, and that works. Moving on, we're done with the nested loop with our left pointer. Let's do the same thing with our right pointer. This symbol is not in our set, so we can decrement R. The two characters here are the same. Great, we have a palindrome so far. Let's lastly increment L and decrement R. On our next iteration, we see that at the left pointer, we have a capital R, which is in our set. Fantastic. Let's check the right pointer. We have a lowercase r that's also in our set. But comparing them, we see that they're not the same character. Remember, there's no rule to change the uppercase r into a lowercase r. Here, a palindrome is case sensitive. Their underlying numeric ASCII values are 82 and 114 respectively, which aren't the same. So we do not have a palindrome, we actually return false here. Our time complexity remains big O n. As for our space complexity, it's become big O n from big O 1 because of our pre-computed set. Let's see what we have to change in our code. Okay, so as you can see, we're given another parameter, a vector of characters. We'll be transforming this into our set of characters. Let's call it included set and pass in the pointers to the first element and the last element. We're going to retain our two pointer approach but the logic changes because we now have to check against our new set. That if the current character we're on is not in our set, we're gonna increment and skip it. After that, we'll do the same thing with the right pointer. If the current character is not in this valid set of limited characters, we will decrement the right pointer. Lastly, we don't have the two rules from the original Lico problem anymore. That means we don't normalize any uppercase letters. Let's get rid of this function call. And now, even if we have a capital A and a lowercase a in comparison, we're going to return false. It's not a palindrome. And believe it or not, those are all the changes we need. It's short and sweet. And if you learned something today, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.